Alive and Kicking. Um, we're going to see two case studies. The first one is Yuzo, Julius Zorn, and it will be presented by Matthias Witte from Tech Division. Have a warm welcome for him. Thank you very much. So, um, we did the project for Yuso. Yuso is a um, yeah, it's not working. Oh, okay, I go there. Okay, um, Yuzu is a manufacturer for um, medical products. It's not so sexy, but um, it's it's helpful for people. And um, they're compression garments, or thesis and support objects. Thank you. Um, the project started in 2017. Um, it was a very fragmented website with 17 languages, three type of three instances, and different servers. Um, and it had a very high maintenance effort, so the, pr um, the customer wanted a new system. Um, there are some features, for example, an advent calendar lottery. Um, uh, different product types with the catalog, a detail view, and stuff like that, and um, dynamic events um, with different dates, um, catalog uh, views, and stuff like that, and uh, manageable booking form um, where the clients can uh, take then uh, attendees on these events. And a store locator, image morph features, but that is not so special. Um, so today I want to talk about languages. Um, the website, uh, there are different requirements for the new website. Um, they have um, about 14 languages. This is not so special for NEOS, like all we know, so it works. Um, they wanted a language selection page. Um, and the language selection page is a very special thing for them. The customer explicitly wanted this. He wanted a page where the user can choose between the languages. And the problem with this is um, you have the dimension, for example, for German and the dimension for English. What do you do with the language selection page? Um, you can use, for example, a dimension uh, local like ZZ. And this renders in the front end with the X default hreflang tag. Um, this is so the common way, like we do the special case. Um, this is the configuration for that. It's pretty simple. It's like every other dimension uh, configuration. You get the hreflang tag uh, rendered with this. And what you get there is um, um, a backend editable page for the um, language selection page so the customer can adjust the direction of the, the order of the dimensions and stuff like that, and can add other things like every content he wants to place. The next thing we have did for the customer for the language issue was um, an, an import and export uh, tool for the content to give the content a third-party translation agency for translating the content because of the uh, high amount of content in different languages, they were not able to um, do the translation by themselves. And the third party agency was not able to use the backend for, from, from NEOS or the customer don't want it, the uh, agency uses this. So we built um, an export um, tool to export the content give the content to the translation agency, which uses Traders, um, gives us back um, the content, and we have the import mechanism to import this content into um, a special workspace for the editors where they can review the changes and publish the new content in the new language. Um, the, yeah, in the next thing, so, yeah, this is a video. Um, this is only a simple thing, so, so you can choose the source language, you can choose a target language, and you can proceed with step two. 
there you have options for filtering the node types and stuff like that. And that there you get um, a tree in this dimension you se uh, select it in the source and you can um, check special pages you want to uh, translate only certain pages like that, uh, like the first page or the second page, or you can translate the entire content for the old dimension. And you get a XML, um, it's pretty similar to the default uh, content export feature of NEOS and can give this XML to the agency and they do the stuff. We enrich the XML with some uh, information for the agency, like an URE, where ca they can see the content, so they know the context from the content, and it helps for translating the content. Um, the next thing um, we um, have uh, is the language by language uh, uh, publishing of the new website. So um, the customer, because of the mass of the uh, dimensions, they were not able to ship every language on, um, on the release of the page. So we um, had this uh, proxy before, and we could adjust uh, on based on the language segments uh, where the redirects goes or where, uh, where the, the, the request goes to the new site, to old site, to the site uh, from, from, uh, for italic. It goes on this type of reset or something. Everybody knows this issue on going live on different systems. And the mindfuck always uh, for us uh, are the redirects, especially on the, such a yeah, chaos setup um, with different type of free versions on different servers. And yeah, it's always a really chaos. And we had headache on this. And you can imagine, um, um, yeah, yeah, it's a redirect issue is always an issue for everyone. And everybody wants to s solve the, the, the thing by, uh, in, 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 I don't know how it works in your companies, but every time a project goes live and somebody comes around uh, five minutes before going live, okay, we have this new redirect map and nobody wants to maintain this. So <laughs> you get more headaches, more headaches. And in, um, so we built for the NEOS uh, backend um, a solution for that that are manageable redirects in the NEOS backend. Um, there are certain requirements, or there were certain requirements for that. Um, we wanted that the backend users are able to edit the redirects, like every other th content there, uh, which is common in, in NEOS, um, different target types. So we wanted not that uh, anybody should know the target URL, because um, going live, probably someone moves the page in a tree or something. So we wanted explicitly that the target type is uh, a node possible. Also assets and also the static URLs. Um, you are able, you should be able to uh, configure the HTTP status. Um, we implemented some tracking features. So they wanted um, some short URLs for campaign features, like they print a flyer or something or have an advertise. Uh, with a short URL, and they want to track, okay, how many people are going on this URL, and they, at this point, they don't know the, the final URL, so nobody wants to maintain um, the um, short URLs by server configuration or something. Um, and also, um, an import-export feature. Um, how does it work? Uh, if a request comes to NEOS, uh, it goes through the default root management from NEOS. So there are some routes from other packages, the NEOS routes and some other packages. And our route for the redirect mechanism is on the very end of the entire process to ensure um, pages will be shipped like they should. Um, OK. Um, the next thing is we build this in the content module. So now you can. Um, ask, okay, why do you want to have this in the content module? Um, the thing is this, um, the users are able to edit the root, uh, the redirect nodes like um, they are 
um, like every other node. So nobody needs to um, implement a special backend for this, a special rendering for the editing features. So they, they are campaign features, there are some other target features. Um, there's an export feature for the redirects. You can export the redirects into an ex uh, Excel file, um, give this your SEO agency or something, and you can import it back. And yeah, with this feature, so we, ho we hope we solve the redirect issue for future projects. And um, the u customer is using this mainly for the, the campaign um, issue for short URLs in different dimensions. And um, yeah, soon uh, we want to publish both features, the translation tool for the export of the content for Trados and import uh, mechanism and the redirect management um, and hopefully somebody can use this. Um, the redirect management especially is for us, for, 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 for us very helpful. So the result uh, is, the, is an easy to use website because it's Neos and <laughs> less headache because of the redirects in our project. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Matthias. Next up are Nicolas Helgers and Ferdinand Kuhl. They're within Webson. They're going to talk about vedes.com, their case study. Um, uh, they will be here in a second. They're coming. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we would like to showcase to you a solution we did with Flow, um, and we are going to split this presentation into two parts, uh, a business part where I would like to explain what we did, and the technical part where I'd like to explain, or Ferdinand would like to explain how we did it. Um, I'd like to start with a brief introduction of Vedis. Um, Vedis was founded in 1904, and quick question, who has ever heard about Vedis before? Not so many, and I thought so, but Vedis is the leading trade organization for toys and games in Europe. Um, and Vedis is active in eight European countries and uh, fulfills its services to more than 1,000 retailers. And our cooperation began in 2016, and they asked us simply to do a so-called digital shopping window. It was meant as a digital extension of the retailer's activities um, to give the customers the possibilities to check the stock situation, uh, product availabilities, make reservation, and something like that. And um, that was the assumption. And this is what became reality in only three years, from POS, from e-commerce, from mobile, marketplaces, etc. It was quite a lot. On the one end, we realized more than 150 e-commerces for the uh, participating uh, Vedas retailers. So each retailer is able to create their own e-commerce with own product assortment, uh, campaigns, uh, prices, whatever they want. We did three so-called internal marketplaces. Um, there is the Vedas.com with the whole Vedas product assortment. There's Baby's World, is a dedicated assortment for for baby and small child articles, and there is MC, it's model railway articles, and um, all these orders are distributed to the participating um, Vedas retailers, um, and this is uh, done based on uh, geolocalization. Furthermore, we integrated two external marketplaces, eBay and Check24. Um, so baseline is again the retailer's e-commerce and they can simply connect uh, or configure a, a, a dedicated product assortment and distribute it to these marketplaces just by click. Before I hand over to Ferdinand for the technical part, I would like to summarize with some, in my opinion, very interesting uh, facts. So we, we, we managed or we realized more than 150 customized shops and we are handling 122 domains for this. The infra is running on 17 servers. Um, the whole application contains and, and maintains more than 3.5 million products. 
We do per day more than 2,500 imports to handle all these products. And these are per day more than 12.5 million import lines. Yeah, and to do so, we had to solve fu some funny and sometimes not so funny things. And uh, how we did it, and using three examples, uh, I would like to hand over to Ferdinand. Hi, uh, I don't know who of you already listened to Daniel's talk just a few minutes ago. He took some of my points, but I will repeat them anyway. Um, let's start. We selected, or I tried to select, three main problems to introduce to you. We learned when going with flow to this kind of large scale. Just to say, this, this is not a NEOS product, but only flow the framework which helps NEOS does its stuff. Um, as you already heard, we started with a single pause, and now we have different marketplaces and so on. The first time ever uh, we had the situation where it's not one domain, one system, but it's more like, whoa, 100 domains, one system, but with different use cases. So we don't only have to listen to those domains, we have to react, switch, in which mode are we? Is this a marketplace? Is this a retailer shop? And stuff like this. So it's not only a redirecting to another domain, but changing systems behavior. And the nice thing, the really nice thing of Flow and its components, and especially here, the HTTP chain, is you have the freedom to hook into this process at nearly any point. Getting the routing completely done is not only um, done by this FEDIS routing parameter here, where more or less um, the host name gets introduced into the routing chain and into the routing context to react later on. Um, it's, uh, I, I have it for you if you want to see it. So this is this FEDIS routing component and more or less it's only extracting the host from the request and set it into the routing context to be able to react on it. This is the routing part. Of course, if we are to generate the routes, we have to address the resolving part as well. I guess the friends of Flow did not see that coming, but having this aspect-orientated uh, feature, um, aspect-orientated programming feature in place, uh, this unexpected expand expandibility <laughs> um, helped us a lot to get uh, the, the generation of the routing regarding to the domain domains fixed without any big hassle. One hassle we will get with routing will be uh, in a few seconds again. Uh, take this for a server, even if I know they don't look like that, uh, if it's a professional um, tool. Um, so f to make this huge numbers possible, uh, Nicholas told us, um, we cannot work with only one of them. Uh, I guess it has been 17. 17 of them are currently working and the number is still increasing. And all of you know already if you are to uh, scale a system um, horizontally, you have to share some parts of the system, be it the database, of course, it's always the database, but some kind of system state, especially if it's Flow or NEOS, it's caching. And one of those caches Daniel already told you about is Redis, and the first, uh, uh, the first experience with just dropping in every cache we need to have on all of the machines, changing to Redis was great and worked a while. And then we learned um, the Redis implementation we have with this NEOS backend, or it's a Flow backend, sorry, of uh, Flow has a limitation when it's come to organizing its lists. I know this is very technically, but uh, what you see here is uh, for every named cache, uh, Flow will organize a list of cache entries, and every time you access or try to write a new entry, 
it will search for the entry through the complete list. We already learned we have 3.5 million products. The routing cache has at least 3.5 million entries. So whenever we generate a new route, we have to search the 3.5 million entries if we did not already generate a route some time ago for it. This doesn't go so quickly. So the Redis cache has to be cleared all a few hours to have the system still operating on, it, on our journey. But this helped. Just changing the implementation from list to uh, this list rem and write push of Redis to S for set, uh, working with sets, um, solved the performance issues a lot. Uh, Daniel also told you you have this problem with flushing and its atomicity. Uh, yeah, we hit that one as well. I just learned that there is already a better implementation from the Sandstorm guys. We will have to check it. But I guess this will help anyway. And we have, um, as developers, the, uh, I think, uh, responsibility to carry those kind of knowledge back, which we not did yet. But I guess we all agree, uh, as a community, uh, we should do so. Uh, yeah. And the last example I brought to you is um, <laughs> a bit of funny. What you see there on the left side is uh, a shopping cart, a basket. Uh, this where you uh, collect your products before you go to payment. And in usual e-commerce, or uh, we are all used to just put some products to the basket and then go to the payment. Uh, not in Fides, because if you selected products from different retailers, they cannot do a single checkout. Uh, that's not a limitation of the technique, but their limitation. They need different orders. So our problem has been, whoa, um, our base e-commerce system we wrote 10 years ago, uh, seven years ago, um, have already al always only had to work with one basket, one payment, one order. And now it's one basket, session basket stuff, but if it's come to payment and processes which comes later, there are many of them. And in theory, there are 640, I guess. It's, it's the number of retailers uh, multiplied with the number of available services. Services are stuff like uh, bring at home or uh, fetch at the store or just reserve it for me, I'll come it, fetch it later. Um, and again here to, 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 to get back to the flow part or why, why this framework and technique works out here too is, um, I don't know who of, them, who of you already have written own packages. What you here see is just an extraction of the package boot method uh, where we just uh, had the luck that our assumption from, from the uh, past was just uh, let's make this a signal. We'll connect in our packages or in later packages with slots to this later. Worked more or less perfectly with no adjustments to our work from the past. We just connected all those new actions which, had to, which have to be taken after the... Um, order after going to payment by just connecting the uh, Fides specific wishes to all uh, to, to this old events. Yeah, um, I just want to say at this, at this point it, it's a great tool to work software with. I know we, we didn't talk about Nears but about Flow um, and hope we were able to show you some examples where Flow really plays its strength. Thanks. <clears throat>